Hello everyone, thank you for your patience. I'm sorry that technology's got the better of us today. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna paint. I hope I'm gonna answer all your questions. I'm gonna anticipate them. And of course, don't forget you can post underneath the video and then I can address all those questions for you. So first of all, let's get started. I'm gonna really whiz through this because I'm gonna whiz through, not lo lots of chit chat. I'm gonna make it all about the technique, all about one stro stroke painting and um, of course the way that I'm combining it with decorative painting and we're going to take each other on that fabulous journey. So first of all let's talk about loading our brush. Now I've just wiped this one down because we had a bit of a false start on Facebook so I've wiped it off I haven't put it in any water yet. So first of all I'm going to pick up a triangle of colour and I've picked that up so it's on both sides and it's a decent amount of paint. You can see here I've got the same on the white so a good amount of paint and now I'm going to just wipe it into my brush now it's really important we've had lots of questions about how do you keep your colors clean and you keep your colors clean by not letting them mix into each other so I purposely make sure that I keep it on this part of the plate so I'm going over it again and again. Now, if it looks like I'm starting to get too much red or too much of that burgundy and it starts to get muddy and I'm just going to let this get muddy for me. Oh, do you know what? This is the quickest way of making it muddy. Um, don't do that, by the way. That's me just showing you how to get a muddy brush. You'll end up with it looking like this. And when I then come to paint, it isn't going to be nice. And let's just show you what I mean. Look at that. It really, it's not pretty. It just, it just looks blended and horrible. So how do we get this right? So the first thing that I'm going to ask you to do is to take a, bit, a wet wipe or a piece of kitchen paper. And we, in, in general, we tend to have it screwed up like I've got it in my hand here. Well, let's open this up because we need an area that we can wipe a brush in. So you're going to wipe it in two different areas from each side. Don't go mixing it. Don't go squeezing it and pulling the brushes, but literally wipe it in different areas. So you're keeping the colours clean. Then we'll go back into our painting palette and mine just happens to be an old plate. And I'm going to pick up the, the pink again or the burgundy and then I'm going to pick up the white and I've got them clean. And look at the difference now. Look at how on both sides of my brush and when I paint, you can see that. Look at how lovely that is. It's cleaner, it's crisper, it looks great. So as we carry on painting and we carry on, picking up our paint and we make keep going and we keep blending those colors and creating this lovely lovely decorative effect that we've got what happens is you'll find that you've used up most of the paint on one side you've still got paint left on the other so i'm going to sweep my brush again i'm going to take it and i'm going to pull that paint all the way through the bristles and look at how i've taken out that dry patch so brush loading is critical and even with n very limited paint on my brush if you when you're when you're sweeping if you end up on the top of the bristles and you're doing this this will not work and what will happen is you will start to get not only ridges of color which you can see but you'll also separate the bristles and the colors will get blended together so again, you go back in and you pick up really clean triangles of colour and we sweep it by laying down the brush, not so that it's flat against your surface, but so that it isn't vertical. About a 45 degree angle is great. And then when you then come on to work, look at how smooth and creamy and colourful that looks. So how do we get enough paint on our brush? Well, that's really something you need to learn to feel. And until it feels creamy, I would be saying to you there probably isn't enough paint. But if you take that sweeping action with literally probably two loads of paint, so two lots of triangles and blended in between, you should have enough to get going. And once you've got it all the way through, you can pick it up 
and sweep less often because what happens is the paint that's inside will just draw that paint through. Now, I'm just going to paint a rose for you because you've asked me about shading and colouring. So remember how we do this. I've got two parallel, um, two um, lines in my head that are creating a V with a little pivot point. And I'm going to start on one of them. And remember, the harder I press down, the bigger the petal I'm going to create. And I'm just going to overlap that one and I'm going to create another one there. Starting to run out a little bit of paint, but don't worry because there's still some paint on the other side of the brush. So I'm using up both sides and I'm going to come back. I'm just going to paint a little more and anywhere that you don't like or you felt that it ran out and you want to go back in, you can put go over the top of it. And then we're going to put in another stroke. So remember, let's just sweep that brush a little, pick up some more of the paint, and I'm going to put another layer in here and I'm going to build this up because I want to be able to show you some distress techniques. So here we go. And I've got a little bit of that pink coming through and I'm starting to lose my edge. So let's look at what my brush looks like. Well, there you can see I've run out of paint. So it's pulling the colour through, but it isn't pulling enough of it through because I've probably got some, a dry patch in the middle. So let's sweep that brush properly and push out and push through the paint and then come back in and pick up some more. And then this time now it's feeling creamy and I'm sure I'm ready to paint again. So I'm just looking at how I'm going to finish off this design. So I'm going to put two parallel lines here and I'm going to paint myself that little bridge. And then I'm going to paint myself that little U, the one that we use for the centre of the flower. And I'm going to come back around and put another little, um, little stroke in there and then a comma to go this way. And I need a, something to fill this gap. So a comma to go that way. And there you can see, there is one of our flowers. Now a little tip for you, this green's really bright and vibrant, but if I put the green over where my red is, and I then start to blend it through, and I then pick up some more of that green and some more of the white, what you're going to see now is a much more tonal colour. Look at how that green actually, actually sits really well with the reds. And you can now see how that shade just literally is finishing off the design. So don't always feel you have to take away that true colour, even when maybe something that you feel isn't quite where it needs to be in terms of the actual shade that you want because just by having a hint of the colours that you were using before you can often get a really really tonal effect. So that's how we're going to get our colours together. Let's look at um, one of the other things that you've talked to me about which is composition. So I'm just going to move this board out of the way and just work on this one. So this is where I'm actually got some um, teaching guides with compositions on for you because I think that's going to be an area that everybody's looking for. But let's think about flower arranging compositions. So the things that work well. So we can work in an L. So we could put our big flower here and smaller flowers going up and across here. I'm just going to get some more white paint so you can see what I'm doing. We can work in a triangle. So let's just build that one in a bit more. So again, big overlapping, maybe getting a little bit smaller. And again, coming up here and perhaps building up some leaves and some detail there. We can work in a crescent. So we've got a crescent shape where we've got our big flower and they get gradually smaller and they finish off here. Or we can work in um, an, a, a reverse um, triangle. So we can work this way. 
rather than the way that you've seen at the top. If we're working with a design where we're building from a bouquet, so let's say, for instance, we're building a bouquet, so something like this, we can just literally build our flowers like this. But whatever you do, when you are doing your decorative painting, don't forget to have perhaps some tendrils coming down, perhaps some tendrils going up, just leading into the pattern and the design, extending out to the sides, giving you those extra little bits of inspiration. So I'm going to be, um, and in the next set of painting pages, there are more ideas on how to do compositions. So watch out for those, but I'll try and build them into these projects as well. So that as we're doing and we're learning together, you're actually looking and learning composition as well. Right now, I'm gonna go back to the project that I've got here because I want to actually talk to you about blending gel and extender. And they're two completely different project products. And I'm going to put them on my board because I want you to see the consistency, but also the color. So that's our blending gel. Look at how it's holding its shape. It's in a bubble, but it's also a little bit cloudy. And it's, it's literally, it's slowly spreading, but there's quite a lot of surface tension there that's keeping its shape. On the other hand, when I use extender, it's not only is it clear and it starts to hold a bubble, but look at the difference between the two. Well, first of all, when I move my card, the um, extender goes everywhere, whereas the blending gel doesn't. The blending gel allows me to actually hold its shape, whereas the extender just literally is, is much more liquid and fluid. And you can see the little beads of extender that actually are running along the surface tension whereas I don't get the same thing. It's more like a drip with the blending gel. So this is blending gel, this one is extender. If I want to create shadows or antique, I'm going to work with blending gel. If I want to create paint effects, then I'm mostly gonna work with my extender. So what do the two things do? This one is actually the blending gel is one of the elements that's in the composition of the paint, whereas the extender makes the paint bleed. So I'm just going to, and I'll talk to you a bit more about the technical elements of it um, in um, the next video, but I'm just conscious for all those lovely people that were kind enough to join us on our Facebook Live and that have missed the opportunity of seeing anything, I'm conscious of making sure we get this video up as quick, quickly as possible. So let's go into this blending gel and I'm going to pick up a little bit of it across all of my brush. So the brush has been washed, it's been dried and it's been uh, so washed in water and then dried. And now I'm going to let you see what happens when I get a little bit of white and that blending gel. Look at how I can get this lovely smooth and creamy fade. So I can get the edges of the paint to just fade away. So what's the best way of doing it? Put the blending gel across the whole of the brush and only put the color on one corner. So let's go back into the blending gel and pick it up across all of the brush. Pick up a tiny little bit of it across the corner and you'll see there, if I was using that, as a shadow or actually to, um, to just highlight something that would look exquisite. So I'm going to use this white and I'm just gonna highlight around this leaf. I've got a little bit too much of it in there, so I'm just gonna sweep it and pick up some more. And I'm just going to use it to just smooth out that little bit of white and get a glow. You can see I've been a little bit heavy handed there. If that happens and you don't like the effect, let me show you how you could put that right. So I'm just gonna take some white and some of the green and I'm going to pick up some of the red because I want to mimic what we had on my, our brush. So almost 
done that now. Just getting that little bit of colour back. And I can come back on here and I can overpaint where I need to just to make sure that I'm happy with the result. And it's quite interesting that you can do that. So let's go back in and get some of this blending gel. So I'm just going to create a shadow. Oh, and actually, while I've got the two colors on, before I clean my brush, I'm just gonna show you a little trick. So again, I'm blending the color, but I'm going to let this run out. So I want that color to be really faint. So I want not too much paint on my brush, hence the reason I'm taking it into different parts of my palette that you can see here. Right now, let me show you how to paint one of these roses as a shadow. So I've still got the two colors on here, but I'm painting it very, very faintly. And you'll see how this works beautifully if you want to put these in the background of your paintings. So just having them as shadow roses and then each time picking up a tiny bit of the blending gel because my brush is quite dry. There's not very much paint on here. It's going to pick up a little bit for the middle. Look at this shadow painting. So effective and really then just lends itself to just fading into the background, having those behind. Right, let's move on to this. Um, this shading that we were talking about. So I'm just going to clean that brush off because I need the paint just on one side of it. So we are picking up our blending gel and for antiquing and um, getting a little bit of a shadow, I'm going to use this little bit of brown. I'm just going to put it on here and sweep it into my brush. And again, let's pick up some more of that blending gel. Just about used it up on there. There's a tiny bit left rather than waste anything. So the paint is on the edge of this brush and the blending gel is across the bottom. And I'm gonna trace the design that I did. And I'm just, you can see, I'm just laying down a very small amount. I'm gonna make this darker so that you can see it. I can see that hint of color, but I'm just going to make it darker, I'm just tracing the design there. So you can see that I'm just taking off the color and I'm going to do the same thing. And I've gone darker still so you can see as I'm tracing it. That's what's happening. I've got that, I need it a bit softer. So I'm just going to blend a little bit more. Remember, there's no mistakes because you can always go over them. There we go. That's better. Look at the effect we're getting there now. We're just giving ourselves those shadows and that shadow needs to come from right under there and just again that little bit of antiquing and you can see how we're building up that effect now if i go back and i repeat what i did earlier before i put too much paint on and it means i need a tiny bit more of my blending gel because that is now has now just about run out. I'm just going to check the colour and the blend. So I've got it nice and even. I don't want any white, real sort of white splodges. I want to make sure it's smooth and creamy. Remember that creaminess. You'll feel it on the brush itself. And let's go in here. Let's just have a look at this. There we go. That's much better than the first time. Look at how I can just, can just follow those lines right up to the edges of my work and this 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 little wet area will just fade away so i'm going to go a little bit stronger so that you can see it i don't want you to because of um of course because of the cameras you can't look at that there we go that's that's what we're looking for we're looking for that shadow that we've got there so antiquing and creating shadows and glows and even when you finish, you can still go back and create those shadows and glows. And as that dries, it actually lifts the whole thing up and brings it to the forefront. Okay, let's talk about extender and look at some of the things that we can do with this. Oh, and I tell you what I promise I'll do, I'll show you some marbling. You're going to need 
I'm not going to be able to do it today because we're going to need two things. You're going to need some brushes, which we've got. We're going to need a sponge. And we're also, if you, if you have got one or you can find one in the garden, a feather would be good. If not, a really, really fine brush. So a sponge, a natural sponge is perfect, but because we're trying to be environmentally friendly, let's use um, a bath sponge or even an old rag. So a piece from a t-shirt, we could use that as well. In fact, I had a piece here. Can you just, I'll tell you what, it'll only take me a second and I'm gonna show you something with the extender. I'm just gonna reach it from here. So I won't be a second. Wow, this really is impromptu. Here we go. So a rag into our water. So now I'm going to put some of that extender on here. Now I haven't got all the right colors. So we're gonna have to make, let's go with some lapis. We'll make this look like some lapis lazuli. So we'll have some blue, I'll take that off my fingers, um, and a little bit of the purple that I've already got. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna pick this up. And what's gonna happen is, because I've put some extender on here, what you're going to see when this ink, when this paint goes down is you're going to see how it's going to blend. And in fact, I'm going to get a little bit of white. So I'm going to put some bits of white on. This will look, this will look good. This is, oh my gosh, this is exciting. This is how we're going to start doing things like marbling. And I need to show you some more paint effects. I need to teach you them because they are not only a huge amount of fun to do, but you get amazing effects. So here we go, here is that blue. Are you ready to see what happens when I take it down? So look at how the areas of the paint are just starting to bleed into each other. And if I just drop myself some extender on there and I pick it up, now what you're seeing is parts of it are light, parts of it are dark, and we've got that lovely, soft, blended effect. And if I take my cloth and I've got a dry patch on the other side, and I'm going to pick up some of the blue, which I had earlier, and I'm gonna put some white on here so you can see what would have happened without extender. Okay, this is, this is where it gets, paint effects are very, very exciting. Right, so there you can see how it's lovely and it's sort of smudgy. And I'm going to teach you to really get that and smudge that in. Look at what happens when I don't use it. Look at how it holds its shape. You can see the texture of the cloth in there. The extender is taking away that texture. It's softening the paint and the whole thing is looking soft and gentle and blended together. And if we then get a very soft brush, and this one, I'll be using one of my paint, um, my um, brushes that I use for um, blending my inks. But if I get a soft brush and I blend, you can see how I can start to blend that, those colors. And look at that, look at how it's all starting to, and I'm just gently brushing over this to get that lovely blended look. And we build up layers with it and I'd varnish in between. But here, well, besides the fact that that's dried and here, look what happens. Smudges, it's not soft, it's not a nice effect. And it certainly isn't the foundation for us to create our decorative effects. So our blending gel is used to actually create the paint um, to create a, a, a blend between the paint and the edge of the brush, between the one colour of paint into the other. Our extender is designed to make the plate paint bleed, to actually let it flow. And what we'll do in the next set of videos, and now my voice is better, we'll do lots more of them. I'll do some more paint effects for you. 
I'll show you some more things with blending gel and with extender and we'll build these and build a background into a composition so that we can learn it all step by step. I've got 18 new painting pages coming out. I hope that um, we'll put a post up to tell you when they're going to be there. Don't forget Cadence is available on the Create and Craft website page. And, you know, I'm ordering more and more Cadence and more and more colours. So get the blending gel and get the extender as soon as you see them in stock because I don't want you to miss out being able to play with them. Thank you for your patience. I'm so sorry about earlier in our little false start, but I hope this makes up for it.